The last term you ever want to use when you're talking about a mini is large, but yet you can't help but use that term when you're talking about a countryman because, well, it is the largest of the model lineup. It's a five-door crossover. That is about a mere inch more than 14 feet long, about six feet wide, and just over five feet tall. To be honest with you, next to our family car, which is a Montero, this thing looks like a little tight. It's actually quite cute. Unfortunately, the term large also is used to describe its price. Kind of painful. So the question is, does this 2022 Mini Countryman S actually deserve the price it commands? Let's find out. Do you need help purchasing your car insurance? Head on over to autodeal.com.ph slash car dash insurance. Here, you can compare prices and customize your insurance coverage from many of the Philippines' top providers. When you've selected the insurance that's best for you, simply fill out the application and complete the transaction with ease through Visa, MasterCard, GCash, GrabPay, or PayPal and receive your policy within the next business day. Get the best deal on insurance with AutoDeal. I'm not sponsored or anything by Carmen's Best. I only thought about this skit right now because it's quite warm today. But much like the ice cream, I haven't met a Mini Cooper that I did not absolutely fall in love with. And this, this blue has got me floored. Now, I did mention that it is a bit on the pricey side, and that's true, but it's really not the fault of the car. Not at all. See, in the United States, if you were to get this trim, you're going to spend roughly about $38,000, $39,000. So you're looking at about 2 million Philippine pesos. But because of all the tariffs that you need to pay when the car gets here, and of course the import taxes, say hello to 3,750,000 Philippine pesos. Youch. But back to the original question, is it worth it? Now at its heart is a twin power turbo 2-liter 4-cylinder gasoline engine mounted to a 7-speed DCT that produces 192 horses <laughs> and 280 newton meters of torque. Now, what all that mumbo-jumbo means is that inside the city, moderate traffic will return about 12 kilometers per liter. But on the highway, this thing is capable of 20 kilometers per liter. Those figures are roughly the same as a subcompact sedan that has only a 1.5-liter engine. Granted, this is also four times the price. But think of it this way. This can achieve zero to 100 kilometers per hour in just seven and a half seconds. It's got a top speed of 226 kilometers per hour, and there is no way a subcompact sedan sounds like this. The 2022 revision introduced a lot of new changes, and it essentially made its predecessor look, well, kind of old in a day. Paired with its iron blue color, not only is it stunning, but it's still distinctly mini in design. There's hardly any chrome on here with the painted surfaces instead of old shiny bits that we're kind of used to in the previous iteration. It's an all-LED affair with projectors and fog lamps found down below that have such an awesome throw. And then this brilliant DRL that surrounds the entire headlamp. It's so cool, it looks like, it looks like David Bowie with eyeliner. Maybe not as cool. And the only thing though is that I wish that they would have hid the sensors just a little bit better. I don't mind them, they're not bothersome, but yeah, a little bit more work on that would have been nice. So you got matching accents down the side, roof rails and cladding at the bottom. A black roof with matching mirrors that have repeaters, and then 165 millimeters of ground clearance. Not much for a crossover, no, but the 165 is helped by these large doors and smaller windows to give the appearance of a larger automobile. Then, these are some of the biggest wheels I've also seen on a Mini. They're two-tone 19s on 45 series tires, which, to be honest with you, add such a badass factor to this car. And then, these guys are in front of discs up front and discs at the rear. Some of the most robust brakes that I've ever used in my entire life. I mean, they're so strong, it feels like they could stop the rotation of the Earth. 
as if its size and shape weren't iconic enough, now you can really spot a Mini from like miles away thanks to these bright rear LEDs and the Union Jack pattern that you will find inside. These guys are so bright that if you're stuck in traffic and you're applying the brakes, look at your rear view mirror and you'll be like, Oi, mo mo lo. It happened. Uh, also, since this is an S, there are twin exhausts found down below. Now, when you open it up with the power tailgate, which is actually pretty fast, by the way, Jack noticed that, you are looking at 450 liters of very usable space because this tonneau can actually 86. Um, at 450 liters of space, you're looking at about the category of the same subcompact sedans that I was talking to about, talking about earlier. Uh, and if you haven't seen that review, by the way, I just shameless plug, do click somewhere on the link because we have a comparo of the M Grand, the uh, City, and also the Almera, which actually was a lot of fun to do. If it's, the link's not on the screen, I'm sure it's somewhere down below. Now, back to the Mini. It may have a little bit less space than the subcompact sedans because those guys were above 450, a little over 500. But when you fold the second row, you are looking at 1,400 liters of space. Now, there's no way a subcompact sedan has that. And then also, obviously, there's a little bit more space when you remove the false bottom. And then there's also this cool and nifty feature that you can stick out so you can hang out of the back of your Mini without scratching your car or dirtying your legs. That is pretty darn cool. I like that. I wish all cars had that. The rear seats of the Countryman S are a pretty large contrast from those at the front because, well, the bolsterings back here aren't as noticeable or as supportive as that in the front seats. In quite in fact, if you were to go around the twisties, you'd actually be kind of sliding around back here, which might be actually a lot of fun. Uh, toys back here include air vents found up front, two of them I might add, and then two Type-C charging points. And then in the center armrest, you've got two cup holders, and then additionally, you've got bottle holders on either door with speakers. Space is actually pretty decent. Um, elbow room for two passengers in the rear, not an issue. A third passenger, not so great, because, well, there's a tunnel, and yeah, that's gonna eat up a lot of elbow room. So two adults, actually not, an issue. Uh, leg room is actually pretty good because you can stretch your legs even underneath the passenger or rather the driver's seat because that's, well, that's my normal driving position. So uh, leg room is, you're looking at maybe about seven to eight inches. That's actually pretty big. And then headroom, at least four inches, man. That's a lot of space back there. Um, it's quite comfortable. Uh, the air is actually pretty good back here as well. I have sat back here while Jack drove and the other time my wife drove. And I gotta tell you, the air is actually pretty good too because, well, since the cabin is not very big and there's a tonneau for the cargo space, it cools the cabin off very, very quickly. And that, I think, is actually a pretty big plus. Now, if you've never sat inside a Mini before and Partly because you've always thought that that car is basically for caco-sized people. That's where you're dead wrong. Check this out. See, the Mini and its power chairs can adjust so much so that I don't think fitting quite much taller people would ever be an issue inside this car. Because not only can you move the chair this far back, but you can also make it sink and then move the steering wheel as close to the dashboard as possible. Look at the amount of space I have. I'm telling you right now, from my foot to the accelerator, it's roughly about seven inches. That's seven inches of leg room. And look at the headroom. Look at that. That's, now what is that? Is that another eight inches? That's eight inches, dude. And look at the reach that I have to the steering wheel. Oh, mind you that when you do move the steering wheel, even if you are a taller passenger, the instrument cluster actually moves up and down with you. I am not the biggest fan of it simply because I just like the analog gauges more, but that's actually pretty darn cool. So truly, I'm not saying that Shaquille O'Neal could fit back here. No, not that, but anyone above six feet tall, possibly even six two, six three, even six four, wouldn't have an issue sitting or driving inside this car. And then watching them getting in and out of it would actually pretty damn be <laughs> damn funny too. <laughs> On the well-appointed steering wheel, you will have buttons for your audio and cruise function with a braking function. It's not a full-on adaptive feature, but it'll be enough to keep you from rear-ending someone in front. Although wheel-mounted, paddles are available to keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes focused on the road thanks to a heads-up display which provides speed and select menu displays. 
you've got an 8.8 inch touchscreen infotainment system, which doubles as your reverse camera, which can be controlled either via the touchscreen or the iDrive system using the knob here at the bottom. If you know the iDrive system, that means it's basically a BMW, which means it's actually pretty darn snappy. The good news is, is that it has Apple CarPlay and wireless Apple CarPlay at that. The bad news is no Android. Automatic air knobs found just above a few function buttons, and then just below that, toggle switches that this century's minis have been known for, which include an eco, standard, and sport driving mode, and then some found on the roof, one of which changes the ambient light inside the car, which it's no disco, but damn, that looks pretty darn good. The speakers inside the automobile are Harman Kardon and they sound pretty great. The bass at the start uh, needs a little bit of help, but you can easily change that in the settings of the automobile. Which brings me to the three things that I'd want to tweak inside this car or perhaps even change. Number one is that, well, there's no Android capability. Not everybody's Apple, so please include that. Number two, these buttons here, I thought they were touchscreen. Apparently not. They're actually buttons that you have to press actually quite hard. And number three, it's very cool that there is a charging pad found here on the center armrest, which has a clip. Unfortunately, it can only hold quite small phones. Like, it'll fit jacks, but mine is just too big. What? What do you mean, what? Did I say something wrong? The Countryman is well equipped with a total of six airbags, ABS with EBD, parking sensors, stability control, traction control, a reverse camera, tire pressure monitoring, and Isofix Telly. Ride height or not, there is little so almost no body roll inside this car, even when you're taking corners, which makes the Mini just uh, so fun to drive. Um, lane changes are immediate. The steering is so quick that you're in a turn even before you're actually there. It's, it's mind boggling. Now for those that know what to expect from a Mini, that's actually a great thing. For those that don't, well, it's not as if that you're going to be questioning your life choices when you're driving on EDSA because of the rigidity of the chassis. No, not a man. Understand that it's not a Rolls. But the trade-off is, is that it's got a very go-kart feel to it. And, and on paved roads, wow, this thing is just so planted. Oh, and speaking of Rolls-Royce, I actually had the opportunity of meeting the CEO when he was visiting Manila a couple of years back. Torsten Mueller Otvos. God, I hope I'm saying his name right. The thing about him is, is that when he's not balling in a Rolls, guess what car he's driving? I'll give you three guesses, but you're only gonna need one. The NVH inside this automobile is actually quite superb. You'd expect that when you're on the highway. It's almost dead quiet, really. But inside the city, it's actually pretty darn good. Um, the most unpaved roads that we can think of would be, like, again, EDSA. But even then, it's actually pretty darn quiet. And it starts when you close the door, really, because the car just feels like it's built solid. It's so quiet, and yet, check this out. When we open the door, you can hear the road and the cars passing by. Once you close it, it's solid, and all of a sudden, it's just so quiet. It's amazing. Granted, the tire noise inside the city on more unbehaved paved roads does creep in, yes. But, I mean, you're rolling around on 19s and 45s, so it is a bit expected. The DCT is, well, it's kind of uncharacteristic of a DCT, granted, because the DCTs that we're normally used to is on much more affordable vehicles where uh, it's trying to get rid of first and second gear as quickly as possible, and there's a bit of a jolt here. There is none. I mean, you can floor it on, on, on eco, on sport, or on normal mode, and the transitions are actually pretty smooth, and I like it. I think the best part about this automobile is I like the fact that it's so tiny and powerful at the same time that it can bring you to the speeds of going back to November 12, 1955 in less than 10 seconds, and at the same time, it's got brakes that can hold you in 2019 forever. It's kind of a deep reference, but you'll get it. <laughs> Mini has been getting a lot of flack, and 
loyalists are right to say that it's not the same car anymore. It's, it's either too big, it's too expensive, it's too German, and yeah, I get all of that. But the truth is, for a nameplate to survive, it's gotta evolve, no matter what anybody says. But at what cost? Okay, so truth is, you can probably get yourself a BMW X1 for much less than you would spend on this Countryman. Well, this is essentially the same as a BMW because it's a BMW underneath. But I guarantee you that the X1 won't make you smile from ear to ear or as much as this Countryman will. So is it worth it? Maybe not to you and me, but I'll tell you one thing that the next time I see this on the road, I'm gonna be extremely jealous of the person driving. That's a fact.